R Corp. You know, the place where the factories grow out of the ground, where organic matter dies and steel takes its place. Yeah, that's the place. There used to be so much quantanium here back in the day, the fumes of Lyria's atmosphere could have gotten you high. Well, I heard a lot has changed. So I decided to check it out, see if R Corp gets the El Guapo stamp of approval. Well, well. Looks like we're going to Walla. El Guapo's master rating and mining locations review. The first thing you will notice entering Walla is how thin the atmosphere is. The flying is easy and painless, making mining a breeze. The moon's aesthetics are appealing and looks as if it has been covered in a thin layer of snow over the aging and graying earth at the surface. Even on the brightest part of Walla's day, you aren't mining blind. The moon is beautiful and peaceful, but also feels alien and lonely. With no surprise, upon arrival, my scans are real to me nice 10K and up RS signature cluster sizes in all directions. Walla sits with a slightly above average amount of quantanium at 2.1%, but I've been getting reports of people finding quant every load. It also has a pretty average tier 1 percentage density of 5.4%, 5.8%, and 5.5%, bexalite, gold, and terranite. As for the tier 2 elements, Walla sits between slightly above average to well above average, for chances of running into everything from agrecium to laranite, with the highest chances being obviously hephaestonite at 18.2% and beryl and laranite at 16.6 and 16.4%. Now here's where things get a bit interesting with Walla. Walla's common materials that the rocks contain are aluminum, corundum, and the worst common element in the game, tungsten. So that's a tier one, a tier two, and a tier four common. So this means you're gonna have about a 70% chance of finding the more profitable rocks here. Aluminum weighs in at 91 mass per SCU. Aluminum having the second lowest density and mass to SCE ratio in the game makes it a god tier common element and since I tier the common elements not based on the price but based on the profitability and ease overall when mining, I consider aluminum and quartz tier 1. Tungsten is a garbage rock. You don't want it. It has the highest explosion strength and the highest density out of all the rocks in the game. Sure, it lowers the resistance by 40%, but with 644 mass to 1 SCU, you will be sure to find 60k mass rocks with tungsten worth as much as a 10k aluminum rock, with roughly the same percentages. Corundum, on the other hand, belongs to what I consider the Tier 2 class of common elements at a density of 4.02 and a mass to SCU ratio of 134. It raises the resistance by 10% and instability by 0.5, but isn't a terrible common since its density is the third lowest density out of all the common elements in the game. I'd like to shift gears here and talk about Walla's proclivity to multi-tiered rocks. As a miner, you may have rarely noticed these rocks or really cared about them. Depending on the location, they can be pretty hard to come by. But what a multi-tiered rock is, is a rock with just that. More than one element or tier in the rock besides to the common material. So consider a rock that has, let's say, 20% backslide and 40% agrecium along with some corundum, all in one rock. If you are lucky enough to find a multi-tiered rock that has two tier one elements, it's a fat payday. When you find a couple with two tier two elements, that's a quick payday. I feel that no matter what you are doing or what your mining style is, getting more than 60% of sellable materials that sell from anywhere from 2.6k to 3.5k per SCU out of just one rock, that's a no-brainer. On Walla I didn't notice it at first, but then as I went from one cluster to another, I almost found multi-tiered rocks in every single one. This was all over a two-day period of mining on Walla. I was a tier 1 hunter myself. I wasn't too excited by these results until I thought about how not only this could happen pretty commonly with all the tier 1s I farm here, but I could also do some speed running if I wanted to and possibly pull in a quick 150-250k profit load with just tier 2 alone.
let's shift focus to refineries. The two nearby refineries being ArcL1 and ArcL2 bring some interesting positives and negatives when the time for refining comes. ArcL1, at the wide forest, you mainly find negatives. Unless you only have Quantanium, I don't recommend you using this station, let alone making it your base of operations in this area. At ArcL2, on the other hand, I completely recommend making it your base of operations if you decide you love mining in the ArcCorp area. With bonuses of 3% to Quantanium, 7% to Gold, and 2% to both Bex Light and Bores, you have some nice incentives to keep coming back to this awesome space station. I mean, sure, you have a negative 8% to half-ass tonight, but who wants that trash anyways? Just place other Tier 2 elements as priority over it while you're out mining. Okay, now back to Walla. My final conclusion, I would say, Walla seems to be a place where you can have some peaceful and profitable mining. I think I would recommend it for the mole rather than the prospector at this point because of how much Tier 2 you will pick up, but that entirely comes down to your own playstyle. I ended up having two runs at each station, but I only have footage of this one. The other one looked very similar. All were sub 30 minute runs. Hello? Hey Chris, how's it going? Did you get my package? <laughs> yeah, that was me. Maybe you'll think twice next time before you give me that RNG bullshit. Later, jabroni. Now let's wrap this up. Walla. And taking into consideration the percentage of tier Q to two elements, the common materials, and the ease of flying, Walla gains a respectable EMR score of 85.5. Due to its proclivity of having multi tier rocks, it also gains bonus and bonus, bringing our EMR total to 95.5. Thank you.